Hi, and welcome to this episode of Encountering Jesus. My name is Cindy Johnston, and I'm your host. You are listening to my book, Stairway to Heaven's Door. This book is copyrighted 2023, and all rights are reserved. No part of this book may be reproduced without permission. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Now here's the book. Chapter 7 A Way Where There Is None In the book Heaven's Door, the first thing I did with Jesus was offer my heart keys. In Revelation 3 verse 20 we see that after we hear Jesus' voice, we are to open our heart's door to him. I believe these two actions are very similar and Jesus will be there when we invite him into our heart. I can tell you from my own experiences just how faithful Jesus is in this. And I have also seen that he will always make these encounters possible even when I cannot. The only part one provide is my tiny mustard seed of faith. But even when my faith has grown dim Jesus has given me a way to reconnect with him. Let me share a little vision Jesus gave me that illustrates what he did. Jesus ignites my faith. First, I saw a cruise ship floating through the water. It was like I was in the sky looking down from above as I watched the scene. I could see that there was no one on the deck of the boat. I looked to see where I was. I found myself there in the water floating some distance away from the ship. I could see that the boat was slowly sailing away from me as I drifted along with the waves. Then things changed. Instead of me watching from above I now was in the scene. I was in the water and I could see the ship in the distance. I saw Jesus come to the back of the boat and he spotted me in the water. With perfect aim he threw me a flotation device. I grabbed onto the traditional white and red ringed lifesaver. I made sure I had a tight hold as I knew this was my only hope. The rope attached to the device made a way for me to be pulled along behind the boat so that I was no longer drifting away. Then using the rope Jesus began reeling me in. Once I got close enough Jesus helped me back on board. In seeing this little vision, I knew Jesus was showing me what my part was in making these encounters happen. Right then I made a promise to Jesus and God the Father. I told them that if they would throw me a lifesaver when I had drifted from them that no matter what I was doing I would grab it. And now nine years later I can say that Jesus and the Father have always been faithful. No matter how resistant I had been to meeting with them when I was ready, they would always throw me a little something in the spirit that I could grab onto with my faith. When I had that little bit of faith then with their help, I was able to fully enter back into my encounters. What Jesus will do for one person he will do for all of us. So, I want to encourage you that as you begin to have your divine encounters Jesus will help you. Now, one of the things I have found is that when we wait too long to have another encounter with Jesus it grows increasingly harder each day that goes by. But if you will ask Jesus for help, he always will do a little something that will let you know he is there. He needs our faith to make these encounters happen so when he throws you that lifesaver grab a hold. You do this by responding to whatever he does for you in the spirit. It may be ever so slight, but if you will grab a hold of it then your faith will increase. Once he has helped to activate your faith then you will be ready to open your heart again. As your heart opens then you will be able to see and hear better as you enter back into your times with him. Learning to trust. Now, you may not fully understand why Jesus wants you to encounter him in the Spirit. There are many reasons, but the most important is that you can grow to fully love him and trust him with your heart. It has taken me all these nine years to learn this truth. But this next story was one that really made a huge difference in how I saw Jesus. Before I get into the story let me lay out for you just how bad things were so you will see why this story was so impactful. To begin with I could not enter into my heavenly place for more than a minute. I did not realize that my anger with Jesus was always bubbling below the surface. It should have been obvious because any time I tried to make a connection with him I'd just snap and then be off doing something in my house on earth. This hopping back and forth was not intentional. 
I just was so hurt I couldn't help myself. During all this my life had grown even more difficult. I knew I was reaching a breaking point and I knew that I could not keep going without Jesus' love and comfort. So, it was in my utter despair that I finally humbled myself. I asked Jesus to please help me stay put in my heavenly place just long enough to get what I needed. And he did just that. As I share this story remember that I'm seeing through the eyes of my heart into the spirit. When you develop this ability, you learn to see and experience the things of the spirit like you do the things here on earth. But this has nothing to do with our flesh man. So in that it is very different. I have found that the more I experience the spirit realm the more real it becomes. Another thing I should tell you is I have another life in the heavens with Jesus. We all do, but we must learn to access this through the Spirit. That is why the people and places are familiar and I know already so much about them. Here is the bunny story. When I came into my heavenly place Jesus was there. This time I didn't run the minute I saw him. Instead, I allowed him to help me get dressed and ready for our time together. Most of the time when I would come into my heavenly place Jesus would suggest we go for a walk or sit by the ocean. It was usually something we did alone, but today he suggested we go to the cafeteria. I was relieved by this because there was a definite strain between Jesus and I. And though I felt like I desperately needed him I didn't really want to be alone with him. Now I want to stop right here and tell you something I have discovered about Jesus. He is extremely humble and he never makes a point to prove that he is always right. In fact, he allows us to learn that on our own. Being able to learn this during these divine encounters has been incredible. So, the strain between us was real because my wounded heart knew he had to be wrong this time. But Jesus knew contrary to what I was believing about him that he loved me dearly. He also knew that he needed just enough time to show me the truth. Now back to the story. Once I was dressed, I told Jesus I was ready to go. Jesus took my elbow and kindly led me out of the building we were in, and into the warm sunshine. Protectively, he continued to hold my arm as we took a paved walkway up a hill to a large building. As we got close, I could hear all the ruckus going on inside. People, mostly men, were laughing and talking so loudly that some of their distinctive words were clear. I had to smile, they were quite the lively group. Upon our arrival, Jesus opened the door and gently ushered me inside. I saw that everyone was eating and the minute they saw us they all grew quiet. Some of them even turned and looked at us. All of this made me feel so uncomfortable. Without my deep connection with Jesus to steady me I felt a bit lost in such a large room filled with people. But, almost as if it was planned, the minute I began to shut down a young boy, Nate, came running up to me. I knelt down to give him a big hug. There is nothing so sweet as a loving hug from a child. About this time those watching me went back to their food. I noticed the talking and laughing was much less than before yet having them not looking at me helped to settle my nerves. Then there was Nate giving me such a glorious hug which took the focus of my thoughts away from myself. Nate took my hand as he begged me to come see his new bunnies. I looked up at Jesus to see what he thought about it. He nodded so I allowed the sweet boy to pull me along to the back of the room. The back walls were floor to ceiling picture windows. In front of those windows was a large animal enclosure. I could see two bunnies inside. One was a tan and white color and the other one was gray. Everything looked very well done in their living space, and it was clear these bunnies were being well taken care of. Nate tried to lean over and get one of the bunnies out of the enclosure, but he was too small. There was a table nearby filled with men and one of them came over and offered to help him. I knew from other encounters that the people in the room loved Nate and were used to helping him. When the man pulled out the bunny it didn't surprise me that they seemed to have a routine. Nate quickly got on the floor and crossed his legs. The man then put the rabbit in his lap and Nate took a hold of it. 
I smiled at first thinking this was going to be pleasant, but then I realized that the rabbit wasn't happy. Okay, I know it's a bit abrupt, but I'm stopping the story here to end this chapter. The bunny story will pick back up again in the next chapter. Thank you for listening to my podcast. This book, Stairway to Heaven's Door, is a companion book to my other book, Heaven's Door. And both of these books are used in an e-course to help you learn how to encounter Jesus. You can find more out about all the books that I've published and the e-course on my website, heavensdoor.com. Bye now.